All right, our last big type of solving equations is going to be solving equations with variables on both sides. This is the trickiest type of equation that you are ever going to see. And so uh, as soon as we get this down, we should be good with our equations and ready to move on. So what makes these a little bit different? The difference here is that the variables or the x's are on both sides of the equal sign. So for example, you might have x plus 5, then equals, not just a number this time, but maybe negative 5x plus 7. Now, we can't do our do and undo chart yet, because we don't have all of our x's together on the same side of the equal sign. So what we're going to need is we're going to need to do is move things. So let's draw our line through the equal sign like I've been doing in those other problems. And we're going to look at both sides. I see that I have x on one side and I have negative 5x on the other, but I want to get them all on the same side. What I like to do is I like to move things. Typically, I might like to move my variables to the left. So right now, if I want to move this negative 5x and I want to put him over with the x on the other side, I'm going to add him. Remember when we did do and undo, we made opposites to undo things? Well, I'm going to undo that 5, uh, 5x there. But I need to make sure that I keep this equation balanced, so I'm going to also do the 5x over here. Add 5x to both sides. Now, negative 5x plus 5x is nothing. I cancel out. I'm left with just a 7 on that side. Now let's see what happens on the other side. 1x plus 5x is 6x's. Combining like terms, remember? Plus 5 stays the same. Now if we look at what we have here, we have a regular equation. This is just doing and undoing. At this point, what I'm going to go ahead and just do is remove everything that doesn't have anything to do with x. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. If you want to draw your table, that works too. Alright, so 5 and negative 5 is 0, so I'm left with 6x on this side. 7 minus 5 is 2. All right, now we have one last thing we need to do. We need to divide by 6 to get x all by itself. Divide both sides by 6. I get x equals, uh-oh, 2 over 6. 2 over 6 is a fraction that can be reduced. 2 over 6 is the same as saying 1 third. So we were able to solve our equation with variables on both sides. We moved everything to one side, and then we solved it like we've been solving all the rest of our equations. Alright, so here's the next variables on both sides equation we're going to look at. And we're going to use the same steps we did on the previous example. We're going to start by drawing our line down the equal sign. Now, our goal is to get all of our x's or all of our variables on the same side of the equal sign. So I have 5x over here and I have 8x over there. Now, it doesn't matter which side you choose to put everything on, but you just need to make sure you're consistent. So, just for fun, let's move... Uh, from the left hand side to the right hand side this time. I have 5 x's and I want to undo those 5 x's. So just like before I need to subtract or do the opposite. Minus 5 x's. Well, remember this is an equation so we need to also minus 5 x's on this side. So 5 x minus 5 x cancels. I'm left with negative 14 on this side. 8 x's minus 5 x's. That's like 8 bananas eat five of those bananas, you have three bananas left over. Then that four stays the same. So now we're back at a regular equation, do and undo. So if you want to draw your table, draw your table. If not, let's go ahead and remove everything that has nothing to do with x. So I see that pesky little plus four at the end, and that's what I'm going to do first. Negative 14 minus 4 is negative 18. Mm. So, negative 18 equals 3x. One last thing to do. What do we need to do to get rid of that 3? Divide. I know you guys all screamed that out with me. Alright, so 3 over 3 is 1, and we're left with x equals negative 18 divided by 3, which is negative 6.
All right, here's another one for us to try. Draw my line and I see, uh-oh, I got variables on both sides, so we're going to need to do some moving. So it looks like I need to move my x's to be together. I've got them on both sides. Doesn't matter which one you choose to do, I'm gonna to choose to move this over here first. Negative three x. I was pointing and you guys couldn't see me pointing. So minus three x's is what I wanna do here, so I need to also minus three x on the other side to keep it balanced. Well, 3x's minus 3x's is nothing. 3x's minus 3x's is nothing. Uh-oh. Let's see what we have left over. I'm going to change colors so it's obvious. I have negative 2 left over on this side, and I have 7 left over on this side. This is a special case of these equations with variables on both sides because all our variables went away. It has a special answer. Now, I want you to ask yourself, when does the number negative 2 equal the number 7? Never. They're never equal to each other. Therefore, this problem has no solution. No solution. There's no value of x that would make this thing true. Now, there's a little shortcut way that you can write no solution as well, and that's a 0 with a slash through it. I don't care if you write out no solution or if you write zero with a slash through it, and neither would a test or anything like that. You just need to know that they mean the same thing. Now, this is just one special case. Most equations have a nice little answer where x equals a number. All right, this one is even trickier. If we draw our line down the equal sign, we can see that we're not ready to start moving things yet. Let's look over here on the right side. I'm going to make it obvious I'm over on the right side. Look over here. All right, if we look over here, we see that we have to combine like terms. This is 8. That's negative 3. Those are both numbers. They're on the same side. I can combine them. So let's go ahead and do that. 6x, he's going to stay like he is for now. We're not doing anything yet. 8 minus 3, that's positive 5. So now this is the equation that we're left with. Now remember our rules, even with our special case problem, we still had to go ahead and put things on the same side. So let's go ahead and let's move one of those six x's. I'm going to move this one. To move it, I have to undo it. And since it's an equation, if I do something on one side, I have to do it on the other. So six x minus six x, it's nothing. Six x minus six x is nothing again. Alright, this is another tricky one. So let's see what we have left over on this side. 5. On the other side, we have 5. I asked you a question last time, and um, I'm going to ask you a similar one this time, too. When does the number 5 equal the number 5? Well, all, all the time. And so this isn't our no solution case. This actually has infinite solutions. Sorry about that. I was going to shorten it and change my mind. So this problem has infinite solutions. Any number of x that you choose is going to make this equation true. So now you have seen both special cases. Let's take a minute to review our special cases. So our two special cases. Now remember, these are special cases. They don't happen very often. Where when we ended up with a number like negative 2 equal the number like 7. And this was something that never, ever, ever, ever happens. Never does negative 2 equal 7. So in this case, we would say our final answer was no solution. There was a shortcut to write no solution. It was zero with a slash through it. Now our second special case was where we ended up with a number like 5 equals 5. This is when the two numbers are the same. So you ask yourself, when does the number 5 equal the number 5? And that's always. So in this case, there are infinite solutions. So 
So these are our two special cases. Will you see these very often? No, but when you run around, when you uh, run into them, you shouldn't have any problem because we've talked about what they look like. All right, another equation for us to solve. We're tired of those special cases. Let's hopefully get an answer for this one. I draw my line through the equal sign. I see that on the left-hand side, I have a whole bunch of stuff. And on the right-hand side, I only have x's. Now, you can choose to move things however you want to move things. Or you can go, hey, there's only x's on the, the right-hand side. I'm going to move things that way. Now, I'm going to show you two ways to solve this problem. And the first one is that way. That 3x is all by its lonesome over there. Let's leave him over there. And let's go ahead and let's move the 4x. So I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. 4x's minus 4x's is no x's, so that's 0. Negative 4 stays the same. 3 minus 4, that leaves me with negative 1x. One last thing to do, and then we are done with this problem, because we can go to our do and undo chart. Looks like I need to divide by negative 1, and we're left with x equals negative 4 divided by negative 1, which is 4. So that was just one way to solve this problem. The second way to solve this problem is to look on that right-hand side of the equation. and Yeah, you don't have a number getting added or subtracted, but if you're not adding or subtracting anything, well, you're adding or subtracting 0. So you can go ahead and you can write a 0 there if that helps you figure out what's going on. Now, I'm going to move things a little bit differently this time. This time I'm going to move that 3x. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. 3x minus 3x is nothing. 4x minus 3x is just 1x. Now, the other way we solved this equation is an awesome way to solve this equation as well. I'm just showing you a couple of options. You're going to see we're going to end up with the same answer. So now I have my equation. I have 1x minus 4 equals 0. This is ready for our do and undo. So the first thing I need to undo is the minus 4, so I'm going to add 4. So now what I'm left with is 1x, because these cancel, equals 0 plus 4, which is 4. Now, it looks like we still have one last step to do, like we have to divide by 1, but what is 4 divided by 1? This is 4 again. So our final answer is x equals 4. No matter what you do, whether you choose to move everything to the right-hand side or whether you choose to put that 0 in there as a placeholder, we've got 4 both times. Now, we learned some pretty handy uh, techniques to help us solve in some of the earlier videos, and those were distribution and combining like terms. We already used combining like terms, so now that means we should use distribution. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw a line down my equal sign, and if we look at that right-hand side of the equal sign, it looks like we have some parentheses that we need to take care of. So let's go ahead and distribute. Right in front of those parentheses is a negative 8. That's what needs to get distributed. So the first thing I need to do is negative 8 times 6. So when we do 8 times 6, it's 48. So negative 8 times 6 is negative 48. Negative 8 times 5 is negative 40. So we have negative 40x since it was 5x. On the other side, there's nothing to do, so they stay exactly the same. All right, so if I look on the left-hand side and I look on the right-hand side, I can see that I don't need to combine any more like terms. I'm ready to move. I have 40, negative 40x 40 over here. I have 3x's over there. I'm going to move my x's to the left. That means I'm going to undo 40x. I'm going to add 40x to both sides. 3x's plus 40x's is 43x's. Wowzers. Negative 5 stays the same for now, minus 5, equals negative 48, 40, and negative 40, cancel. All right, now we're back to our do and undo place. Hooray! Let's go ahead and undo this minus 5 by adding 5. 
cancels and we get 43x equals negative 48 plus 5, which conveniently enough is negative 43. Last thing we need to do to finish our do and undo is divide by 43. So we get x equals negative 43 divided by 43 is negative 1. I hope you guys are seeing that all of the little steps that we've done in all the videos before this are adding up. They're compiling to be part of solving in general. You guys are amassing your knowledge and you will be solver experts soon. Exciting news. I just discovered that I do not have to stick with my template and so haha. -ha, this line is going to be green. All right, let's go ahead and get serious and let's solve uh, this equation here. Um, looks like I have x on one side, x on the other side, so it really doesn't matter what I choose to move. I'm going to move the x from the right. I'm going to undo that x. So I need to undo him from both sides to keep it balanced. x minus x is nothing. I'm left with negative 4 on this side. x minus x nothing again, so I'm left with negative 9. Uh-oh. This is one of those cases where we need to think, when does the number negative 4 equal the number negative 9? Never! So your answer is no solution. There is no answer. Remember the shortcut? Zero with a slash through it. And you like my pretty purple? Sorry I got a little bit excited on that last problem, but my colors are just too cool. Alright, on this problem we have x minus 1 equals 8x minus 8. Is there any distribution to be done? Like terms to be combined? Nope. So we can go ahead and start moving things. I'm going to start with this x, I think. I'm going to undo positive 1x by subtracting 1x. That means I have to subtract 1x from the other side. So x minus x is nothing, and I'm left with negative 1 on that side. 8x is minus 1x. It's just 7x. So you can see I'm putting my variables all on the right-hand side this time. It's okay as long as you uh, stay consistent throughout a problem. Now we're ready for our undo. Undo negative 8 by adding 8. Negative 1 plus 8 is 7. 7x, seven these cancel, so I just have 7x. One last thing to do is divide. We need to divide both sides by 7. So we get our final answer of x equals 7 over 7, 1. Okay, we're on our last problem now, I swear. I just want to give you guys as many examples as possible so that when problems arise in your projects, you won't have any issue solving them. So I drew my line. I'm looking at the left-hand side. Yuck, it's a mess. Looks like we have to do some distribution first. Remember, distribute is always your first extra step. So I'm going to distribute this too. The first thing we need to do is 2 times 4. So that's going to be 8. Now it's really 2 times 4x, so it's 8x. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And I also have that negative 8. He doesn't get distributed because he wasn't in the parentheses. Poor guy. On the other side, there were no parentheses, so they can stay like they were. Now let's look at that left-hand side again. It's still pretty messy. I have minus 6 and minus 8. Well, let's combine those because... They're like terms, they're just numbers. So negative 6 minus 8 is negative 14. So I have 8x minus 14 on this side equals 4 plus 2x on that side. Now, all of our distribution is done, all of our combining like terms is done, we're ready to move. I'm going to move the 2x. I'm going to subtract 2x, that way they get undone, and I have to also subtract 2x from the other side to keep it balanced. So 8x minus 2x is 6x.
Now we're ready for our do and undo, and we can go ahead and undo minus 14 by adding 14. I'm running out of space. I'm going to go over to the left-hand corner. So we have 6x left on that side equals 4 plus 14, which is 18. Last step we need to do to get x all by itself, divide both sides by 6. Oh, I'm going to move up. So we get x equals 18 divided by 6, which is 3. That concludes our solving equations with variables on both sides videos. So you saw that to get variables on one side, you had to move them by using your undo principles that we started our solving equations unit with in the first place.